Wow, that's good. Man. Yeah, that's exactly what. Right. And the Sunday school, that was great. I appreciate that. That's a, a wonderful lesson this morning. Amen. Somebody said you need to preach the gospel, right? <laughs> and use words only if necessary. So I'm saying that maybe we could demonstrate the gospel sometimes through life makes a big difference. Uh, again, thank you all so much for being here today with me. Uh, the title of this would be, uh, Lord, be a miracle in me. Lord, be a miracle in me. If you'd like to turn, you can go to Acts chapter number three. I'll be there in a few minutes. I, I want to show you that there's a couple of ways to look at this. And uh, I'm going to, when we get to the scripture, I'm going to walk through that not read it and redo it, but I'm going to just walk through it one verse at a time because I think there's some relevant points that you can get if we just take our time and walk through those scriptures, okay? Uh, there's one that you've heard, heard tell a miracle of God. You've heard people say about miracles of God. Well, have you ever heard someone say it was only an act of God? Yeah, they're two different things, isn't it? Yeah, an act of God. Uh, force majeure out of human control. No one could expect to be uh, perform the impossibility. You insurance companies, anybody insurance agents in here? Uh, sometimes they will use that to deny a claim, you remember? And that it was an act of God. That's not covered under your policy. You know, and uh, in Allegheny County, we had earthquakes a few years ago, and I believe out of the entire county, there was less than a handful of people uh, that had earthquake insurance. So an act of God, there they were with insurance, but they had nothing to cover it. So the government then had to provide a means to repair, I don't know how many homes, somebody said 500, I'm not sure that that's right, but we worked up there for a long time. So an act of God uh, in that regard is different than a miracle of God. Um, this says if unforeseeable natural phenomena involves no human agency, not realistically possible, an unnatural cause, but a miracle of God in, involves the full power of God, amen, without human uh, hands, define the common expectations of people. I'll give you a few examples and we'll get into the scripture. Just a few of these that's recorded in the scripture. What about the miracles of nature? You ever parted the Red Sea before? That's, I'm just saying the miracle of God, had it not been for the Lord, we would have never passed over the Red Sea. The big fish, you know, that swallowed Jonah, yeah boy, uh, virgin birth. What about miracles of healing? The leper, healing of the nobleman's son. Uh, provisions, manna from heaven, loaves and the fishes. All of the things, the miracles of God. So there's a big difference right there. And uh, what about the resurrection of Christ? I mean, I'm talking about there's a big difference. So that's what I want to show you today. And today I want you us to think really clear about this. Are we in a position of where that we uh, are having a difficult time with the acts of God? Are we blaming God for where we're at? Sometimes we do. You say, well, Ed, nobody in the Bible ever blamed God for anything like that. Anybody know where the first place in the Bible is that where people blame God for their circumstance? Genesis. And the man said, the woman that you gave me, Lord, she's the problem. Remember? Right after that, it said, you know, that old serpent that you sent to me is caused my problem. So I'm thinking that throughout our life, according to the Bible, we will find times in our life or circumstances in our life that we will want to blame God for it when maybe we brought it on ourselves. I'm not sure. But I'm just saying that we need to remember that. So what I want to do is to go through this uh, uh, Acts chapter number three, and, and I think I need to tell you what precedes that because it's going to be important for us to understand this. Pentecost had fully come just before that in chapter number two, 
And uh, to make that short, if Peter, Peter was on fire for the Lord. There's no doubt about it. And it said in verse number 38 of chapter 2, it said, Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Christ, for the remission of sin. Well, he preached a real good sermon, but what the, was the result? What was the result of that? It said in verse number 41, And they gladly received the word of God and were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. I'm going to tell you right now, that's a pretty big miracle. How many services have we been in where there were 3,000 people saved at the same time, right? I'm just saying that was a miracle of God right there. So you can imagine the excitement in the air. I, can you imagine being in a service where you have no telling how many thousand people and 3,000 people were saved? We get excited when one makes a profession of it. We get excited and just start having a good, good time. So... It's, this is where this begins. After this Pentecost had fully come, we saw the miracle of God happen here, and the, the ministry was wide open. So now we're going to go into chapter number three, and I'm going to just take my time because it's important. When I read this a number of times, I thought to myself, I see, I see some problems right here, an act of God. I see a lot of miracles of God, and I want to make sure that we see this. It says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, of being the ninth hour. And if you think about that, the ninth hour, you'll find that in John, where the, it was about time for the Lord to say that it's finished. It is finished. A parallel there that would be able to see that it was about that certain time. And, and now listen to what number verse 2 said. There was a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Now there's a whole lot to unpack right here in that verse, so let's just start off really good. I'm talking about blaming God, right? That's what I'm talking about to start with. Went into, uh, into the temple. Verse number two said that a certain man lame from his mother's womb. I, there's a lot of people in this world blame God for their sickness. Very nice thing you said. From the very time I was born into this world, I blame God because I was born lame. This is what he said. We're going to go on down. From my mother's womb. And I was carried, whom they laid uh, daily at the gate. It was common for him to blame God because he was not able to get up and go to the temple. And I'll show you this in a few minutes. It's easy to blame God for our circumstances because that, this guy could easily have done that. Uh, call beautiful, to ask alms, to ask alms. Asking alms from him was normal. Why was it normal? It's because he was not physically capable of performing a task Someone had to help him in everything he did. So he had found out that the act of God caused him to do something that the average person didn't do. He begged for money all the time. Begged for a, a be able to make a living. Uh, let's see what else he said. Uh, at the gate of the temple. Now listen to this. Well, this is, this is good. Uh, who, verse number three. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple ask alms. Did you know something? A man had never been in the temple. I'm going to blame God. I see all these other people going into the temple, but I've never been privileged to go. Why was he not privileged to go? Because a lame man was not allowed in the temple. If you go to the Old Testament, if there were problems with our health, it was blamed that you must have done something wrong or someone else did something wrong. That they were not allowed in the temple. So I'm saying that he was here sitting outside the temple and his people went in. He had his cup out. You can imagine that, couldn't you? Him sitting there lame, what begging for money, a way to be able to get by, and that become a norm. And maybe some of us have been in your life I'm saying some of us maybe have had experiences in your life that have been hurtful. 
You didn't know exactly why you had to go through it. But you did, and sometimes we get mad and blame God. If it wasn't for you, God, I would never have been in this chest right here. It's all your fault. This, this word he's had today in the temple. Listen, in verse number four, Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John said, look upon us. I'm going to show you a miracle right here. Sometimes when you were uh, uh, in a circumstance like that, you would see folks in the way. You would turn your head away from them rather than turn to them. Have you ever been in a shape like that? I get, listen to me. He had a man laying. He knew what was going on. They did. They knew. But he sat fastened their eyes on him. Uh, the average person would say, no, he's just a begging for money. Have you ever been on the street in Winston-Salem or somewhere where you see people standing out here with a sign? How many of you would turn your head when you get to them? I'm just saying sometimes we will not look at the first person in the eye. We will look away as if we didn't see them. Then, and, but the, he changed things. Here, who, uh, verse number four, Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, and he said, look upon us, look. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive from them something from them. That's all the man knew. He wanted to, someone help me along the way. Could I have a, I'm hungry. Uh, please give me something to eat. Verse number six, and Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But right here, we're going to see a miracle of God, okay? We've been blaming God, now we're going to see a miracle of God. Verse number four, six, Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given to thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. Thank God. It put a, I'm talking about a man that was blaming God just like we had. But I'm saying to you that there's somebody under the sound of my voice right now can say, Ed, I'm thankful that God demonstrated a miracle in my life from where I come from. In Sunday school, we talked about that a little bit this morning. I'm saying today that miracles still happen. And then we're going to see a few more things here. Verse number seven. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received their strength. Thank God for another miracle. A man that had been lame all of his life, and all of a sudden he gained strength, and his body was healed. I'm saying to you folks, miracles still happen. This is what he said. Receive this strength. What happens when somebody received a miracle from God? Instead of complaining, they what? Start rejoicing. If you've ever had a, has anybody in here ever experienced a miracle of God in your life? Amen, you have, haven't you? Well, what do you think would happen if a man received a miracle of God? Would he, would, could you shut his mouth? Huh? You couldn't, could you? Well, listen, what, this, what happens to a man when you get excited about what God's done in your life? What was he saying? And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them and entered with them in the temple. I want you to notice what will happen. They, some of the folks in this world, uh, many years ago, you wouldn't come into the temple of God to start with. They wouldn't want some kind of ragtag kind of man like I was. Have you ever been around? They would never allow me to come to church. Look at my past. Look at my life. But listen what he said. When he received the miracle of God, the first place he went was in the temple. Don't you like that pretty good? Amen. I love this. He entered into the temple. What was he doing? He was now, he wasn't lame. He was walking. He was leaping. And he was praising God. That's pretty good. You know something? I believe to my soul, a church would get excited if a, a sinner come in here and you say, well, I know him or her. They're just a bunch of trash. I walk by them a many of a time outside there begging for money. And all of a sudden you see that same person coming in here leaping, jumping in the air, praising God. I believe the house would get excited, don't you? Yeah. Well, that's what we should do, praising God. And listen to what it said in verse number nine. And the, how many of the people, I want you to notice this. And all of the people saw him walking and praising God. 
I don't know about you, but I believe praising God's catching. The house will get excited in a few minutes. Isn't that true? This man's right here, a miracle of God. I've been blamed ever since I was born into this world. I've had problems. And every one of us, if we be honest, you've had some difficulties in your life too. There may be a few exceptions, but I don't believe it. Huh? Listen to what he said, verse number 10. Listen, and they knew that it was he that said it for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement that which had happened unto him. They were amazed that a miracle of God changed his old boy sitting out there on the street begging for money. And now he's in the church praising God. I don't know about you, but I believe everybody get excited. Can you believe that Ed Hall is in church? I think a lot of people would say that. <laughs> there's a lot of people would say that. You mean to say that's got to be a different man? They said, no, I know. I remember seeing him every time. I turned my back on him a few times, but he was right there. Verse number 10, but they knew who it was. For he said it on at the temple gate. A mage which had happened unto him. Verse number 11. And the same uh, and as the lame man which had healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that were called the Solomon's Great Greek uh, Wandering. Verse number 12. Now this is, this is real good. And when Peter saw it, this is one thing right here, folks. Don't you ever take credit for a miracle of God. I mean, you might be a witness, you might be a pastor, you might be something right here. But if there's a miracle happens in this church right here, it's God's doing. Amen? Isn't that the truth? We might share the gospel, we might encourage, we might do all these kind of things. But I'll guarantee you all the credit goes to the Heavenly Father. Ain't that right? Amen? We've got churches got to get this right here. And uh, verse number 12, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, you men of Israel... Why marvel you at this? Why marvel at a miracle? That You know something? Sometimes we see a miracle. There's no possible way that could have ever happened. Well, the people in here, they were amazed. And I don't know about you, but sometimes if you're in church very long, you've seen enough miracles sometimes you just expect it to happen. You ever, you ever come to church expecting? Sure you do. Sure you come to it. You get excited about You wonder what the Lord... As a matter of fact, I'm going to just stop right there. I'll be honest with you. When Wallace called call me and asked me to come down and speak a couple of times while he was gone, I was excited because in my heart and mind, I believed my soul that I was supposed to be here. I mean, I just believe that. Of all the people in Wilkes and Allegheny and Surrey County, why did he call my name? I believe, I believe God intended for me to be here. Amen. Because I believe to my soul there's somebody today, somebody today that's been through some difficult times. I guarantee there's some people in here that's experienced sickness, you've experienced heartache, you've been broken, but somehow along the way the mercy of God come to your house. And there's been a miracle change in your life. I believe that. Amen. I believe that. But this is what he said right here. But right here's what we got to make sure that I don't take credit. Wallace Garrett can't take credit. You can't, the Sunday school teacher, we can't take credit. Listen to what he said. And when, when Peter saw it, uh, Peter saw it, he answered the people, you men of Israel, why marvel you at this? Or why look you so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we had made this man walk. Goodness gracious, don't give that credit to humanity. No, don't give that to humans. Because the miracle of God is where we need to give God the credit. I mean, this world, if it had it not been for the mercy of God, none of us would be here. Amen, none of us. Uh, let's go see what the rest of that says. Let me get to it. Uh, for our own power, we had made this man walk. Verse number, verse number 13 answers that. He said, don't you give it to us, but the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son, Jesus, who, this is this, what, what happens, 
What we're going to find out, there's another miracle fixing to take place in this house right here. He went into the temple into a bunch of people that wasn't saved. Do you believe because you're religious that you're saved? There's people, there's people in churches all over this country that's got a list of Sunday school pens that go down halfway down their chest and still not saved. Amen. We start thinking about how many in here believe your works are saved? I've got any papers? No. If you believe in your works of saving you, you're in a world of trouble. You're just the ones that he's talking about right here. Verse number 13. He said, you're the ones that delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. For envy, for envy, the Jews, the Pharisees, had him crucified. And right here, he's just telling them the truth. You need to see a miracle in your own life. I'm saying we got to be awful careful. When we get to the place to where that we take credit or something like this, but no, Peter had enough sense. He was just going to tell them exactly the way it was. And when this goes on down, he said, you denied the Holy One uh, and the Just One, desired the murder, let him go. Verse number 15 said, and you killed the prince. Amen. The prince of life. Verse, verse number uh, uh, 15 or 19, excuse me. Let's just go up there. Repent ye therefore and be converted. That's why I told you that they were a house full of religious people that had never had a relationship with God. I mean, religion won't get you home. Religion won't get you home, but a relationship will. I'm talking to some people that blame God. You were in trouble. But somehow the mercy of God either came or will come to your house. And it would be at verse number 19 again. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I'm saying you folks, we're living in a world right now that we need to get it right. It's not, it's not religion. I mean, dot and I's and cross and T's don't get it. But a relationship, when you find yourself in a position to where that you need a Savior, the Lord said that the, the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to Titus 2.11. We all just studied that downstairs. The grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared unto all men. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up to real time. I'm going to bring this up to real time. God has blessed me to serve in Surrey County. For uh, ever since we've been down there a little over four years. And I got acquainted with some folks. Um, and one especially comes to my mind that I want to share with you about uh, a lady down there, uh, her mother. I believe she told me eight years ago had a stroke. And if you, if you folks have been around stroke victims, it, it caused her speech, her, her, her mind could not process a question and could not be able to concentrate enough to be able to get that to come out of her mouth. And uh, I said, do you mind me going to visit your mother? I, I, do you mind me just going by and visiting with her? I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you a miracle that was in, that happened to me right here that I saw. She said, no, that, my mama would love that because if she don't get very many visitors anymore. But she said, Ed, mama, can't, uh, she can't take care of herself by herself. She's having difficulties and you'll have a hard time talking with mama. Well, I, that's true. And she said, I took care of mama as long as I could. I, and the daughter did. She took wonderful care of her mama, but she got to the place where she could not do it all. She needed more assistance. So they had placed her in a wonderful institution down there for her to be able to get the care. Well, I went to visit this lady right here, walked in the door and a beautiful big smile come on her face. She's probably in her mid seventies, something like that big smile come on her face and we for what we were able to do we tried to carry on the conversation i would ask her and sometimes she could nod sometimes she would try to answer me but her speech was not real good she couldn't process a question and get it to come out well i went back and talked with the daughter son and told her what a wonderful experience i had with her mother and she said in our conversation somehow it came up that mama loves to sing happy birthday. 
Mama loves to sing happy birthday. And boy, that just rung my bell. Because I believe, I, I, if I get around some, somebody like that, it's a stroke patient. We went in there the next time I visited. I said, your daughter told me that you could sing happy birthday. And you love to do that. That little sweet woman started singing happy birthday for me. Amen. 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 I'm talking about she started singing happy birthday. And God, I'm, I'm going I'm to believe that God put some stuff in my heart right here to help, to help a little bit right there. I'll tell you what happened. I said, honey, do you believe you could sing Jesus loves me with me while I sing it? She said, I'll try. You know, nod her head. I sung that. That little old mouth was moving. Jesus loves me. I went home, went back down and talked to her daughter. She was excited that mama and we were having a good relationship. Uh, God instilled in me, this is, this is how God worked in my life. It may not be yours. But I said to myself, if because this lady cannot process a question, she would always say she would try to process that and try to get out of nature. And if she would get so anxious, she'd say, I can't, I can't, I can't. And I thought to myself, there's, a, there's something in her brain that can tell her to remember happy birthday, but there's something wrong in her brain to tell her that she can't answer a question. So God said, okay, let's find out if she can read. I've got just enough sense to write down a few words. I went over there to visit that little sweet lady and I said, honey, I want to see how much of your brain is not damaged. She could sing happy birthday, but she couldn't sing, she couldn't answer a question. I wrote down some words and I said, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to point to these words and see if you can say the word like you can sing that because it's already in your mind. I'm not something new. I wrote down Ed. She knew my name was Ed. That was the first word I put up there. I took my little pen. She said, Ed. So help me God, this woman said Ed. She didn't stutter. She didn't do anything. She said Ed. Love. Love. Yes, boy. Her daughter's name, she said, she shook her head. I said, what's wrong? Did I misspell it? No, <laughs> no. So help me, she did. She said, in the, I said, do I need to put an H in it? She said, yes. Nod her head like that. Peace, home, love. I said, this is good. I went back and talked to her daughter. I said, your mama might not be able to answer a question, but she can read a word. God said, God said, Ed, I want you to do something else for me. Now, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth, folks. He said, uh, he said, what I want you to do is write a sentence and see if she can read a sentence. Do you believe that? Would you ever ask somebody like that to read a sentence? Yeah. I went back over to her one day. I had some sentences wrote. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just give you just a few of them. I love you. Three word sentences. My name is. I am forgiven. Jesus loves me. I am special. Thank you. I went in that room that day. We went over those individual words. I believe in miracles, folks. I believe in miracles. And if God's going to help me right here today, I'm going to show you that God can perform still miracles. I got in there, and I point to these things right here, the words. Can you say that? So help me, she read a few of them. Yes, Jesus loves me. 
I am special. Thank you. I still believe in miracles, folks. Absolutely, yes. I believe in miracles. Amen. I thought somebody in here say, Ed, your life. Somebody in here said, Ed, there's no possible way in this world that you could take a woman that couldn't say anything. Excuse me just a minute. Get my mind on what to do. You listen to this again, folks. Thank you. Can you hear that? for a miracle, I'm mistaken. And what you did right there, Laura, when that little lady realized that she was able to read a three-word thing and she said, Jesus loves me, there were tears coming off the side of her cheeks. Uh -oh. Friend, I'm going to tell you, God's still real. God is still real. And there's some people right now under the sound of my voice I believe in my soul that are still wondering, could God ever perform a miracle in my life? <clears throat> There's still some things that I need to get worked at. I'm going to read a few of these, and then we're going to close this service pretty soon. I'm going to read you some quotes. You can hope for a miracle all your life. But until you realize that your life is a miracle. There's somebody I'm talking to right now. And it's only by the mercy and miracle of God that you're under the sound of my voice. Yeah. Yeah. What about this right here? You can live like nothing's a miracle. Or you can live like everything is a miracle. Albert Einstein. <laughs> Each moment of life is a miracle. Each minute is an unrepeatable miracle. I'm saying to you that this church is blessed. And because of the miracle working part of God Almighty, we were able to get up this morning, amen, to come to church. Has God ever performed a miracle in you that you can't explain? 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 said, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Since you got saved, has God made a change in your life? Amen. He has, not he? Don't tell me God's not in the miracle working business. Listen to what that says. First, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. If you quit some stuff you used to do, that's a miracle of God. Amen. It's a miracle of God. Galatians. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer uh, I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith. Of the Son of God, our Lord. Ezekiel, and I will give you a new heart. There's somebody in here, I'll guarantee you, your heart has changed from what it used to be. I believe that God is still performing miracles. This, that's enough. You all understand exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, boy, that's enough. If you would get ready to play my song right there. Folks, has God performed a miracle in your life? I've never seen a miracle recorded in the Bible, but I have experienced a miracle in me. 
Isn't that true? I've never seen the water parted. I've never seen the lamb with the loaves of the little bread and the fishes. But God has performed a miracle in me. And my prayer is right now that America, America, Wilkes County, we can see a miracle of God. Isn't that true? You've got somebody in your life right now, maybe there's somebody on the sound of my voice needs a miracle about being saved. It's not, as he said, we, we didn't heal these people. We didn't heal them. But God did. There may be somebody here today that needs a miracle of God. We're going to open the altar for the reception of members, our prayer requests, whatever is on your heart. If you'd like to pray for a miracle for yourself, your family, or a miracle, whatever that is, you all stand. I've got a beautiful song, A Miracle in Me. Yeah, boy. You all just be obedient to the Lord this morning. Would you do that? <laughs> It's a beautiful song.
still works. I believe that. I mean, what we saw in this little sweet lady's heart and mind right now, to see the tears running down her cheeks, realizing that she was able to say that Jesus loves me. I'm special. That may not mean much to you, but a woman had not been able to speak in eight years to that degree. I believe God instilled that in my heart to ask her if she could say a word. Yeah. Yeah, boy, sometimes let's don't underestimate what God can do. Folks, you're all special. I hope and pray that this has resonated in your heart, that God's still real. He's still able. Is there a word on anybody's heart? Anybody? I thank God, Brother Red, for saving me. I wasn't on my back with a stroke, but I might as well have been. Bless because not a word has come out of my mouth that would have brought any glory to my God. Not a word. Amen. But now, now that he's touched me, I will not stop saying the precious holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to proclaim his glory to anybody that I can. Amen. That's what they did, that boy, 